Hi all, in this video we are going to see about the physiology of vomiting. So this can be asked as a short essay for uh, first year MBBS students. So I am just um, taking this class at a first year MBBS level. So uh, uh, first of all what is the definition of vomiting? Vomiting is the expulsion of gastrodiodinal contents from the gastrointestinal tract to the external environment via the mouth. So it is basically the expulsion of gastrodiodinal contents from the GI tract to the external environment via mouth. So we know that we might uh, there might be different stimuli for vomiting. It might be either stimuli like uh, emotion sickness or it might be due to pregnancy. So there are there are, there are several other co several causes for vomiting. So now we'll just see the pathophysiology of vomiting. So as I said, uh, different conditions like uh, motion sickness or vertigo. Suppose a person has motion sickness, then how, what is the patho pathophysiology behind vomiting in such a case? So there the problem is when there is a motion sickness or whenever there is a change in uh, the scenario, the labyrinth which is the primary sen sense organ which is requ uh, required for equilibrium will be affected and through the labyrinth the impulses will reach the cerebellum which in turn will um, convey that information to the brain vomiting center. So inside the brain stem we have got a vomiting center and it is this vomiting center which is mainly responsible for this vomiting response. So in motion sickness it is mainly because of the pathology of labyrinth which in turn will uh, give the impulse to cerebellum which is directly stimulate the brain stem vomiting center. Now we know that sometimes certain irritants uh, can also cause vomiting. Some cytotoxic drugs can cause, cause vomiting. So what is the um, pathway there? So irritants as well as cytotoxic drugs, they act via, they irritate the gastric mucosa and this in turn will send that information to the chemoreceptor trigger zone which is present in the area postrema. So there is a chemoreceptor trigger zone which is present in the area prostima and this in turn will stimulate the brainstem vomiting center for the programmed vomiting response. So this is one way by which the irritants can cause vomiting. Also the gastric mucosa via the vagus nerve it can um, send this information to the nucleus tractus solitarius and this nucleus tractus solitarius also can uh, stimulate the brainstem vomiting center and thereby produce a programmed vomiting response. So there are two methods by which irritants as well as cytotoxic drugs can cause vomiting. So next um, what about pregnancy? In pregnancy the hormones or as well as certain drugs they can directly stimulate the area postrema the chemoreceptor trigger zone which is present in the area postrema which in turn will stimulate the brainstem vomiting center. So this again is another method of vomiting. And finally the gag reflex. We know that if somebody touches the uh, posterior pharyngeal wall in that case also we can have a, a tendency of vomiting. Now that is because Pharyngeal stimulation via the glossopharyngeal nerve will again stimulate the nucleus tractus solitaris which in turn can stimulate the brainstem vomiting center. And even uh, certain emotional responses like pain or uh, some disgusting sights or anticipation all that can uh, via the higher centers it can stimulate the brainstem vomiting center. So this is basically the pathophysiology of vomiting. So it can occur due to motion or vertigo, hormone or drugs, irritants and cytotoxic drugs, pharyngeal stimulation and pain, sight and anticipation. So the basic stimuli are sensory input from gastrointestinal tract that is irritation or distension, vestibular system like motion sickness or inner ear disorders, higher brain centers like sight, smell, stress or anxiety and uh, from the chemoreceptor trigger zone that is uh, the drugs toxin all this can be the stimuli for vomiting and these stimuli will affect the vomiting centers of which one is the chemoreceptor trigger zone which is present in the area postrema it is basically a circumventricular organ near the fourth ventricle that is it does not have a blood brain barrier so that it can come in direct contact with all the components that are traveling through the blood and thus it can detect this blood borne toxins or chemicals and send the signals to the vomiting center in the medulla. So this is one, one of the vomiting centers is chemoreceptor trigger zone present in the area postrema. We also have the main vomiting center present in the medulla oblongata. It receives input from the chemoreceptor trigger zone as well as the vestibular system and the vagus nerve and higher brain centers that is the cortex and the limbic system.
and once these vomiting centers are activated basically for the act of vomiting to occur we need the action of uh, various muscles right so for different pathways include the cranial nerves 5 7 9 10 and 12 the vagus and the sympathetic nerves to the gi tract the spinal and the spinal nerves to the diaphragm and the abdominal muscles so it is via these different pathways that the act of vomiting takes place another important point that we should know are the neurotransmitters that are involved in this process so mainly we've got serotonin which acts on the 5-HT3 receptor then we've got dopamine which acts on the D2 receptor and substance P which acts on the NK1 receptor now knowing the different neurotransmitters and the specific receptors are important because whenever we take drugs to inhibit vomiting we basically target these receptors so that vomiting can be inhibited okay so that is why we are learning about the different neurotransmitters involved so serotonin 5-HT3 dopamine D2 substance P NK1 okay so now we will see about the mechanism of vomiting so for vomiting we've got different phases first phase is a pre-ejection phase so in the pre-ejection phase basically the gastric there will be gastric relaxation and retroperistalsis because the contents from the duodenum has to come back to the stomach and it is during this time that we have the feelings of nausea excessive salivation irregular and deep breathing so that is the pre-ejection phase then we've got a retching phase it is during the retching phase that we've got rhythmic uh, respiratory muscle action that is contraction of the abdominal intercostal diaphragmatic muscles against a closed glottis and the and there will be closure of glottis to prevent aspiration and increased intrapulmonary pressure so i think this will be better explained with the help of a small diagram so suppose this is the outline showing the mouth and uh, this is the stomach so in the retching phase basically your glottis is closed now in the next phase that is in the ejection phase basically what happens is first of all we have this pyloric contraction and together with, together with that when our abdominal muscles contract there will be increased intra-abdominal pressure. Now this will cause the foot to move up and in the esophagus we have antiperistalsis that means peristalsis in the opposite direction so that the foot goes up the esophagus and one more thing that happens is the soft palate is raised so that the foot does not enter into the uh, nasal cavity so here basically the glottis is closed so that the foot does not go down into the uh, trachea and here the soft palate is closed so that it does not uh, go into the nasal cavity so there is this antiperistalsis which moves up and then finally because of all this pressure changes the vomitus is being ejected out so this is the, these are the steps that occur in the ejection phase so in ejection phase we have the continued glottal closure which maintains the pressure and prevents aspiration then we have pyloric contraction which moves the content from the pyloric region to the relaxed stomach then we have intense abdominal contraction which uh, raises the intra-abdominal pressure expelling the contents into the esophagus via the reflex relaxation of cardiac sphincter then we have esophageal peristalsis so the anti-peristaltic waves push the contents into the mouth and there will be closing of the soft palate that is raising of the soft palate so as to shut off the nasal cavity from the throat and finally after this ejection phase the diaphragm is relaxed so which marks the end of vomiting so th these are the events that occur in the ejection phase so basically we've got three phases in vomiting the pre-ejection phase retching phase and the ejection phase so what are the applied aspects as i said anti-emetics are drugs that can be given to inhibit vomiting so because serotonin is a neurotransmitter involved we can give 5-HT3 antagonists like ondacetron we can give dopamine antagonists like chlorpromazine and haloperidol so these are the two important drugs that are given as anti-emetics they basically act at the receptor level to inhibit vomiting so thus if a short essay is asked on vomiting or MSS, you can write about the definition the physiology that is stimuli the centers different pathways and the neurotransmitters involved the mechanism including the flow chart and the applied aspects <coughs> Now one more physiological basis question that can be asked from this part is why anesthetics or any drugs for that matter cause vomiting. So you can say that drugs basically stimulate the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the brainstem which sends signals to the vomiting center causing nausea and vomiting. 
Additionally, anesthetics may disrupt the gastrointestinal motility leading to gastric stasis and increased risk of emesis. So that is why anesthetics may cause vomiting. So thus we have seen two important questions from uh, the area of vomiting. I hope this was useful for you. Thank you.